If you want to learn how to play Clockwork within 15 minutes or less, this is the best guide for you. In this video, you will learn how to play Clockwork from 0 to 100 within 15 minutes. Now, a few things about Clockwork is that he has always been one of my favorite heroes. I have a tremendous win rate in this patch and overall some tremendous win rate overall throughout all the years. Therefore, the main things that we're gonna talk in this video are this. Starting items, laning stage, skill build, game plan, mid-game optimization, and of course, friends and foes. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Jeff. I'm a 7.5k player in the Europe region, and what we mainly do in this channel is we learn the support role fundamentally, and we have created actually many, 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 many guides, not only for laning stage, but right now, full-on guides from the beginning of the game to the end. Before we begin, I want to point out something really obvious. Clockwork is really hard in terms of positioning and every single click can make the difference. If you're gonna hookshot a little bit to the right or to the left or if you're gonna use cogs a little bit closer or a bit a little bit out, it's going to make a huge difference. So it's really hard to imprint this type of plays into just one video. The second one is that if you're into coaching, you can join our six month coaching program. That's almost guaranteed to get you to the next metal, if not medals. Check down the link below and you'll find all the information you need. Let's not waste any more time. Let the timer start and go. Moving up and down, side to side, like a roller coaster. Clockwork is an okay laner. He can be pretty good or pretty bad in the lane stage, and this has to do mainly with the enemies that you're going to face. So compared to Crystal Maiden or Lich, Clockwork is not as strong as these two heroes that I mentioned before, but he's really strong in the mid game. So the fact that he might not have the best possible lane, it's okay because he compensates with mid game presence. The first thing that we're gonna talk are starting items. Now, for both position four and five, I would suggest different builds. If you're a position five, I would suggest something like stick, two sentries, six tangos, one clarity, one mango, or you can just go for a fairy fire or a branch. Whereas you can replace the stick with a ring of protection if you feel like you're going to receive a lot of physical damage, let's say you play versus a Tusker and the Mars. In the position four role, you can have different builds like boots and tangos or windlace and sentries, or you can even go for boots and two sentries and two orbs and for example, do some dewarding and get the tangos later on. Whatever you choose though, what I wanna say is that Clockwork is not a right click hero. Therefore, stats are not good on the hero. You are strong by using battery assault on enemies and stats will not help you to amplify that as you don't really right click. Your hero has mediocre stats, your right click is fine, your armor is okay, but you don't really right click. And of course, even if you buy stats, you're not strong enough to go inside the creep wave and trade into that. The idea of clockwork is to always isolate enemies in the jungle area of the map. As a result, stats will not help you to actually kill enemies. And most likely, just by using battery assault in a 1v1 scenario, you're already too strong to actually trade decently with anyone 1v1, even like really strong heroes like Undying, for example. Generally, Clockwork is a hero that doesn't really right click, as we said, and the idea is to always try to battery assault Cog and kill you inside the Cog. So you wanna kill a hero 100 to zero. As a result, items like mangoes, while will always be useful, are not as important as clarities, because the idea is to always try to kill with battery assault and cogs, retreat back, have more mana, try again. So you have tried to kill him, work out, it might succeed, might not succeed, go back, use clarity, try again. Your strength in the lane stage is actually battery assault. You want a battery assault and at least it's full damage. You know, level one does 240 damage, level two I think it has it does 540 damage. So you understand that combine that with a lot of right clicks and the fact that enemies will not actually be able to trade inside the battery assault, it's so hard for enemies to actually deal with that. As a result, you will always play inside the jungle area of the lane and try to isolate one enemy as said previously. Now, just because your stats are bad, you can't really go inside the creep wave, even though sometimes, let's say, enemies are a little bit behind the range creep, you can go and battery assault and cog the enemy and the hero. So there are some scenarios you can actually battery assault and cog inside the wave, but it has to be a little bit specific as hopefully you'll see in this clip. Now, clockwork has to do a lot with what you play against rather than with what you have. For example, if you play versus heroes like Crystal Maiden, Ancient Apparition, Lich and so on, you can kill these heroes if you're level three just by battery assault, cog, and they're actually dead. But clockwork is all about understanding the duo matchup. 
The idea, regardless if you're a position four or five, is this. Do I have a melee hero with me or do I have a ranged hero with me? If you have a ranged hero with you, what you want to do is actually play on the jungle side of the map, but always be in front, always be ahead of your range core. So if he get jumped on, you will actually go there and assist him. You don't want to play behind your range core. This is really essential. Even if you play on the jungle side, you want to actually be a little bit forward so you can actually close and forward. So you'll actually be able to assist. If you have heroes like Lestrak, DP, Draw, Pagnan, you name it, you name the range hero, you should always be nearby him, but in front of him. If you have a melee hero with you, now this is a little bit hard because again you will play on the jungle side of the map, but the idea is that when you will battery assault and cog, the important is to actually deny one cog, so your position 3 or 1, you know, your melee core is gonna join you and actually right click. So let's say you have something like an Ursa, you have something like a life slur, you can actually battery assault cog the enemy and then you have to open a window for your core, for your ally to actually join you. Level 1, 9 out of 10 times, you will actually go for battery assault. This is the most obvious one. But if you're in position 4 and you want to do some, you know, super swag plays, you can actually go for Cogs level 1. And I really want to mention that this is only for position 4. The idea is to actually start from the tier 3 and start body blocking the creep and actually cog them. If you cog them, they're gonna stack there and just because the crystal priest is slowed, it should be pretty easy to do like 3 even 4 man cogs and they're gonna stack there. Then you keep actually body blocking and you're gonna use cogs again somewhere around your tier 1. What ends up happening is that in the end, after body block and 2 cog usage, you will find your creep wave being under your tower instead of enemies. So all of a sudden, your position 3 has a free level 2. Your job right now is to actually block the small camp and don't let them overall pull and the creep wave is gonna be there forever. But please, if you do that, make sure you get your level 2 as soon as possible because your strength is actually battery assault. After that, level 3, I would actually advise to go for battery assault, then just get level 4 on rocket, then you max battery assault, rocket you actually get rocket at level 10 don't get talent and then you just max cogs talent wise you get rocket at level 11 then you go cogs at level 15 of course you can go level 15 battery assault if you feel you can actually get more kills with this battery assault damage let's say you play versus a blood seeker or something level 20 you go for cogs lysis even though the rocket reveal in this unit has a potential especially with aganims but i think that cog lysis is just too powerful of a tool and of course level 25 i would actually go for cogs but again you can go for battery assault level 25 this is up to you i find cog you know as you initiate to be too good of a spell by now laning stage is overall quite simple you be on the jungle side of the map you try to find opportunities to isolate someone and worst case scenario just go a little bit to the creep wave and just battery assault and then inside the creep wave you try to isolate someone with Cogs. What do you do in the mid game? To begin with, your power spike, your big power spike is level 6 and level 7. I would say level 7 as the battery assault damage is huge. Whenever you get like from level 1 to level 2 to level 3 to level 4, battery assault is actually a tremendous boost in your damage. So with level 7, you can actually kill a lot of heroes. The most obvious one is to actually kill heroes that you can actually kill. For example, if every single minute you kill a hero or a support hero, let's say position five Crystal Maiden or a position five Lich or it's a hero, you have already justified your existence to the game. If every single minute where your hookshot gets out of cooldown in level one hookshot, you get to get someone down, even if that target is not actually priority, this is actually the best possible play. Of course, you want to actually kill priority targets like a Shadow Fiend where you can even kill him from level 5. Actually, I can't name how many times I killed a Shadow Fiend that's like 2, 3k net worth more than me. Early on, I have like 1.5k net worth, that's like 4 or 5k net worth. And I'm just level 5. Yeah, you can kill him from level 5. And you just battery assault cog and you killed him. So ideally, you want to kill priority targets. But if, for example, you cannot really kill priority targets and they have some storms and stuff then you will go for the targets that you can kill solo do not depend on anyone to do that of course if you play versus bloodseeker shadow fiend wind ranger lena lestrak and you have a decent start or a fine start and you have some decent levels you should always focus on the course but if you were to just kill a crystal maiden or a lich or a jakiro that's also fine and you should actually go for that play 
The second plan is you are the initiator. That means there are no heroes that you can actually kill and you want a little bit of an assist and you want to actually be the initiator to just hookshot, battery assault, cog and your team is gonna connect with you and you're gonna kill them. So if you play for example versus heroes that you struggle to kill, that would be something like a death prophet that's gonna use siphon soul if you try to kill your soul on, then you should actually smoke go to the triangle where enemies are gonna fire most likely and you're gonna kill them. Also, the idea is you can actually force BKBs and that's something really cool. For example, you play versus Sven, you play versus a Lifestealer. What you can do is actually hookshot, battery assault, cog. And for example, if they use BKB, you just force stuff out and then you leave them inside the cogs trapped. And that's really cool, especially for example, versus here like Juggernaut or Lifestealer or Sven, that they are going to struggle inside mainly because if you also have the cog talent it will take them forever actually their whole bkb duration to get out and then they are just really exposed you can actually try to use hookshot into cog and push him out with the cogs and this is really good if you play with very secure like storm spirit for example like pack like cop generally versus spirits or versus lark anything that's really mobile and you have a really hard time catching that this hookshot into Cox is gonna give you enough time to maybe for example your team is going to come and lock him down even further and just kill him super cool trick super useful make sure you watch that somewhere here no but we have doom with dagger and i'm so good and of course, my favorite play is you can actually hookshot and use cogs to split the fight into two. For example, you have some kind of Russian fight and then you just use cogs and half of the enemy team goes to the right, half of the other team goes to the left and there is cogs in between and you know the left cannot really help the right or the opposite. Super important to split the fight or you know you can just simply hookshot so you'll find some really like three four man cog let's say there is some kind of meepo that's really also that's really cool play make sure you do that. Needless to say, Clockwork is a type of hero that can actually clear waves, not only with Aghanims and Rocket Flare, but definitely with just one battery assault and just using just one rocket is more than enough to clear waves. So you can do that, but would advise you to stay hidden somewhere in the map so enemies are gonna be scared of you. I find Clockwork a hero that you will get most of your gold through kills. Of course, you can just farm waves and you should do, you should actually farm some waves at some point in the game, but I would prefer if you're hidden somewhere in the map trying to find kills. As a result, since you're gonna initiate a lot, all your itemization should be around your hookshot combo. Early on, I said in the laning stage, you should actually buy Tranquil Boots, Wand, Fluffy Hat and Raindrops. Everything that we're gonna say right now is situational and you should always adapt because Clockwork is one of these years that you can literally just buy anything. As first item, I would actually advise Blade Mail. Yes, if you have a good start and you know, again, you play versus Wind Rangers and Less Tracks and Shadow Fiends, and you have a decent start, and this is the important thing for Blade Mail, you have a decent start. What you wanna do is actually hookshot battery assault, cock them, but sometimes these heroes are going to fight you back. They're really strong, even pre BKB. So, what you wanna do is like, you can use Blade Mail, let's say you play versus Bloodseeker, and actually use Blade Mail and start fighting him. You know, Bloodseeker is like, a really good man fight hero so you can do that for example blade melee versus slark or life slur is not really that good but versus blood seeker for example is actually great the second one and this is the item that you guys should all buy is actually four stuff now you might not pick it up as first item but there are just so many combos hookshot first stuff in hookshot for stuff out, so much utility on this item with clockwork that I would just definitely just buy it no matter what. It's a 10 out of 10 S tier item, please do buy it. The third one is Aghanims and you can actually go for Aghanims all actually in the beginning, right? Let's say you have all of a sudden 1500 gold and it's like 15 minutes in or like 16 minutes in, you can actually buy the point booster which is gonna give you both mana and health. Now Aghanims, the individual components are not really that good, but for Clockwork, which, you know, he doesn't really need stats and all he needs is like health and mana, 
the individual components are actually great. So you can just pick up this point booster, go for Ags, and I find Ags to be extremely good because there are like three things. You can just split boost so, so easy. Like it's insanely good with rockets. Second of all, while in fight, you actually reveal so much area that's like better than having observer board. And third of all, your hookshot actually has double the stun duration. Now, personally, when I get to have Ags, I usually like it just for the rockets. I don't really use it just for the hookshot. I actually get to use it just for the rockets. But of course, if I play versus Spirit, a pack and so on, definitely I will use it just to catch this guy. Now, items like Lotsorb, Glimmer Cape, Ghost Scepter, Shard, all these are like fine items and that's up to you what you will actually buy. What I would actually advise you though is to buy the four stuff and then constantly adapt a little bit of assist just for the shard, I find that many times, while it's a great shard, it's actually a fun shard, I don't have a lot of time to actually buy it, you know, because it costs as much gold as something like Ghost Scepter. And as you initiate, you know, I might as well just buy a Ghost Scepter. It's actually way more versatile as an item. Lastly, what I want to say is that your starting items, as we said, is Triangle, Windlace, Wand, and of course, Raindrops. Raindrops, super essential. What I want to say is that you can also go for a Soul Ring if you receive a lot of physical damage and you just want to tank up a little bit. Soul Ring, while expensive, is fine as an item and I would actually, you know, it's a bit situational but Clockwork fundamentally has mana issues so if you don't buy Soul Ring you'll have to sip a lot of mangoes and clarities. That's why in terms of jungle items I would advise to go for Tumblr Stoy, Philosopher's Stone and tier 3 jungle item whatever makes you tankier. But early on you want some jungle mana items. Lastly, about the itemization, I really want to say that people sometimes go for Urn of Shadows or go for something like Vessel. Personally, and that's like my personal experience, I find them, I find these items really expensive and actually not worth enough, especially Vessel that costs like 3k gold. It's almost your agonims and these two items cannot be the same. Of course, if it's a great Vessel game, you might as well just go for that. But personally, if I'm not buying Vessel, I'm not even going to buy Urn of Shadows. I think it's really overestimated as an item in the clockwork. While it gives him some survivability, some armor, some region, I don't like it personally as an item. Again, that's my personal preference. Now, clockwork is an initiator, so we don't really care a lot about the heroes that we're gonna have with because every initiator has his own game plan and it, it depends on the enemies rather than on the allies. That being said, on the laning stage though, what we prefer in the lane is ranged heroes or heroes that have some kind of spells that can be used inside cogs. For example, we, we like something like Bloodseer that you can just blood ride, Tidehunter that you can just gas, and you start to get the idea. The heroes that you hate, not only in the laning stage, but in the mid game are anything that has a lot of summoned units or anti main So, Bradmother, it's impossible, too many spiderlings, it's really hard, at least until we get, you know, uh, Aghanims to just deal with the spiderlings. anti mate it is impossible to lane, he's gonna burn all your mana, and Clockwork without mana is just not even a hero. Juggernaut, really annoying, but your soul does nothing, Cogs does nothing, it's really hard to deal with him. But you counter a lot of heroes in the mid game. Tinker, Draw, Clings, Wind Ranger, Shadowfiend, Sven, anything that will struggle to get out of the cogs, you name it, he will suffer. So Clockwork is probably one of the heroes that even in the worst Clockwork game, you will actually find success. He's so versatile, cogs inside, or you can just push him out, hookshot, rockets, giving vision, being able to split push. The only thing that this hero does not do is actually defend towers. It's insane. I have some tremendous win rate and I would highly advise you to pick it up. Guys, that's a guide. I really hope you like it. Before I close this video, what I want to say is that if you're new to the channel, please press the subscribe and the like button. It actually helps us a lot and motivates us a lot to keep making these guides that I'm going to tell you takes quite some time. And of course, if you're into coaching, make sure you click down the link below. This is our six month coaching program which is guaranteed that's gonna take you to the next level and of course to the next medals i hope you like the guide gg raza and i'll see you on the next video